<clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're all doing well. I am also fine. Today, I'm going to show you how you can uh, set up WordPress in AWS uh, EKS, which is Kubernetes Managed Kubernetes Service by AWS. I will also show you how you can use Network Load Balancer, which is the modern load balancer, rather than the classic one. So that this will be a very important uh, video for you if you are interested in Kubernetes. So let's get started. I have written all the commands in this uh, blog article. So you can just follow these instructions one by one. The first thing is like set up the EKS CTL. So download this and I'm going to use Cloud Shell. That will be my major terminal for running those, those commands. I pasted this command. So this will download the EKS CTL and then it will set up the EKS CTL into Cloud Shell. Okay, then uh, you can see the create cluster. This is the command to create the cluster. Very simple. Here I just will add some <clears throat> additional parameters like uh, name. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, H Atik WordPress, and then I'm going to give a version. So the version would be like uh, one point two eight. That is the latest version at this moment. Maybe later on the new version comes up. So you can actually check the uh, EKSCTL website. So here is EKSCTL website. And then you can see what is the latest version supported by them. So if you go down and down, so here you will see EKS supports versions 1.23242526272828. So 28 is the latest. So I'm going to use that. Let's run it. So it starts a two cloud formation template that will create all those necessary things like the VPC, the subnets, private subnet, public subnet, net gateway, all those things will be created. So that's very interesting. So it will take around 10 minutes. So maybe you can have a cup of tea or coffee and then come back after 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm just going to pause the video and we'll return when the deployment is done. Okay, so uh, I'm back. After 10 minutes, the installation is done. The cluster setup is ready. So if I minimize this PowerShell and see here, this is my cluster name. And here, if I see the compute section, there is a node group created. There are two uh, nodes, M5 large. There is being running for five minutes. In the networking section, I can see there's a new VPC being created, which is a subnets. And also it has uh, like net gateway and all other things created. So everything is done with EKCTL, just writing one line of code. Okay, now next part is, so what you have to do is like update the uh, cube config, right? So the command is AWS EKS uh, update cube config and then PGM and then name things we have to check the name is i think wp the region is uh the southeast one so what we have to do is like from the region pasted region name is i think wp right if you run copy this command this will update your uh cloud shell and point to the correct cluster for cube kettle cube ctl command So C L E E R let's paste the command. This is the one. It is uh, updating the local context. So that's good. Then what we have to do is install Helm. So I I have run these two commands previously. Already I have downloaded the uh, get helm.sh so i'm now i'm going to run this two section copy this command and then run here okay so the helm in already installed so that's good let's clear the screen once the helm in installed then we have to set up the ebs csi for eks so ebs is elastic block storage and uh, this is a 
which is needed for persistent storage, right? So the nodes, like uh, I go to the EC2, I can show you. So the nodes are actually EC2 instances, right? And there are volumes attached with it. <coughs> Sorry. So if you click here, so we should see two instances being running here and each instance has one volume. So there are two volumes. So uh, the, these are like my instances and so minimize this. These are my instances. If I go to the volumes, I will see there are two volumes. Okay. Actually, I have some uh, other volumes. If I click here, so to in use is two. So the other four I can delete because I was creating previously. Delete volume. Well, this is not, not part of the tutorial. You can just ignore that. For your, your situation or your scenario, there should be only two volumes. That's what I'm going to show you. So two instances, two volume. Let's say I have a uh, I have dropped the one of the instances. So this volume will drop as well, right? Then what will happen is that um, the data that is inside that volume will be lost. So persistent volume, there is a uh, this the concept is that it's not related to any of the instances, right? It is not related to none of the instances. It is related to the uh, cluster. So you will see when the persistent volume installation is done, then you will have no more uh, volumes here that is not related to any of the instances, but other than to the clusters, and it will be managed by the Kubernetes. So the, the beautiful thing is that you don't have to worry about whether this node is up or running or this is deleted or not. The data is persistent in a separate EBS rather than node related attached volume. Okay. So let's uh, copy this line. So this is just this line and then uh, paste it here and replace a couple of things here. The first thing is uh, name, cluster name. So just replace cluster name with your cluster. This is my cluster, so I'm going to give this name. Then uh, this is also fine. And then here is another my cluster. So replace this as well. Let's see. Okay, this is good. This line is also good. This line is also good. Okay. Now let's copy these three lines and then run it here. This is done. Okay, so we have uh, we are setting up uh, EBS CSI. The first thing is that uh, I am YDC provider for the cluster, and then I'm going to create a role for using EKCTI. So let's copy this section. Okay, here, uh, name, EBS is a controller. Okay, fine. Name is space Q cluster, cluster name. So this is, you have to modify. Okay. All the instructions where cluster name is dummy, you have to replace with your own cluster name. Attached policy, approve read only, role name, EBS. Okay, good. So let's copy this section, copy, and run here. Okay, it will uh, it is creating. So let's go to the next command. The next command is then uh, add the EBS CSI to the EKS by running the following command. So we have created the IEM role, and then you are going to create the add-on the cluster. Here, uh, name that's good. Cluster. This is uh, we have to replace with my cluster now. You should replace with your own cluster name. Strange. So 
so for some reason my copy paste was not working but now it looks okay so oh, i don't know what is going on let's copy again delete everything that is here paste okay now i'm just going to copy this name copy and replace with my cluster good and then this is the account id that we need to uh, replace so the account id you can get it from this here So just to replace the account ID and it should be good enough to go click and then uh, you paste the command. Okay, so uh, creating add-on, add-on creation is done. Then we are going to install uh, the WordPress using Helm, right? So the first thing we have to do is like add the Helm repo. Okay, Bitnami already exists. That's good. Then this is the command. Just copy the whole thing and paste it in a notepad. Then uh, this is the name of your release. So you can give any name here like Atik WP. Then this is the repository. This is the service type load balancer. And he, this is where we are saying NLB. NLB means network load balancer. Okay. So remember to use NLB here. Otherwise, it will create the classic class. If you re remove this line, then it will create the classic load balancer, right? So this is the line that sets the network load balancer. Then set WordPress username admin. Okay, fine. Set WordPress password. This is default password. That's up to you. The password 123. And then set WordPress schema HTTPS. I want to set HTTPS for the schema. So let's copy this whole thing and paste it here. Run it. Okay. So that this is the default username and using this command, here I can copy this command for future use. Anytime if you lost the uh, password, you can just come here and get the password here. So this is the admin is the username. Okay. Let's clear the screen. And let's go here with load balancers. And now you'll see that there is a load balancer is being created, right? This is the load balancer is provisioning. Okay, so let's go to the details and copy the DNS name, right? And I'm going to update that into my uh, domain name, name server. So, so here I am in uh, Cloudflare where I'm, I'm going to update my uh, DNS. So my plan is to create a subdomain and point that subdomain to the load balancer, right? So let's say uh, create add in record, choose C name, and the subdomain name will be um, WordPress. And then this is the value and proxy disabled. Let's see. This is done. Okay. So we have uh, pointed our subdomain with the load balancer using CNAME. And once the load balancer is up and running, should be able to, it's still pending. We should be able to browse the site using our domain name. Okay. Uh, we need also an SSL uh, certificate and that can be achieved using AWS Certificate Manager. If you search here ACM, then you will get certificate manager. Click here, it will open in a new tab. And here you can request for certificates. The certification request is very simple. You uh, you just give the domain name. Either you can give a simple subdomain or it can be wild. 
wildcat so i have created a wildcat uh, ssl certificate and if i go to the details the process is very simple you just need to do it a c name record and this data value if you just copy here and then add again copy here and add and then that's it once you add the records you will see that your certificate has been issued and it, the status is success Okay, this certificate can only be used with a load balancer, like classic load balancer or network load balancer. You cannot export it. It can be used only inside load balancers. So uh, we will see where it is needed. Okay. Now here we see this is active. So go here and uh, we see there are two listeners, one for TCP 80, one for TCP 443. And uh, if we go uh, visit the site with our uh, domain name, so it is word paste.akikur.xyz. And uh, if the DNS propagation is done, then we should be, it can take some time, maybe one or two more minutes. It, it still shows time out, but I have, this is small, tiny issue. It should be, it should be good. Yeah, here you see this is the blog okay so everything is good and then we are going to add https yeah connection is not private because uh, yeah connection is not secure because we haven't uh, introduced the certificate we haven't added the certificate to the load balancer so that's why it's not not showing not secure so what we're going to do is uh, clicking here. So certificate is not valid, it is example.com. Okay. That's good. So let's so what we have to do here, go to um, edit listener. And then rather than TCP, we should select TLS. And then you will see an option to add your certificate. So here I choose, you see, this is the certificates I have created using certificate manager. So I'm going to choose the wildcard one because that is applicable to all of my subdomains for adequate.xyz. Once this is done, let's save those changes. Then uh, refresh this and then okay, it will take some time to propagate the changes. Let me go to a different browser and try here. Yeah, connection is not private, I understand, because SSL was not given. Okay, so let's wait for a few more minutes for the DNS propagation to follow everywhere. I think the change has been propagated. Yeah, it shows bad request. And the reason is it's saying you are seeking plain HTTP to an SSL enabled server port. Okay. So what is happening here? If we uh, go to our cloud shell and go to a terminal and then run here, Q uh, cuttle get SVC, then you will see there is an SVC that is running. This is the service load balancer type. 
and this is the external IP or for balancer and they have two ports like right? one that is 80 and which is like linked to 31693 and one is 443 which is related to 30652 so these are the two ports now here this is um, 30652 that are, we are now using into this target it is sending HTTP request to an HTTPS enabled port, right? So that is not good. What we have to do is like we go to uh, remember this name. So this is port 228. So we go to the target groups. And here what we do is we are going to copy this port and create a target group using that, right? That's re really simple what we want to do target group instances give it a name so tg https or tls whatever you want then this protocol you have to choose tls right this is the protocol and then the port number is the port number that we copied from this service 30652 okay 30652 then the vpc you have to choose the new vpc that you created and all things same then instances, choose the instances here, include, create the target group. So that is done. Now let's go to the load balancers, go to the listeners and then edit the section here. Click edit. Here we have to choose our TG HTTPS. So this is our HTTPS target group. Other things you can skip as it is. Let's save. This is saving. It will take some time to change uh, everything and propagate through the all everywhere. So let's try to refresh this screen one more time. Yeah, this is bad request. That's okay. I understand, but I have updated everything. It should we work fine now okay still not but that's okay because this is like it's not fully restarted everything so if we go to the target groups tg we will see our new tg https and uh no this is refresh it should be reconnected with a load balancer good this is tg https we have yeah it's still unused because there is like a certain amount of time after that it's being used. Yeah, it's healthy. It shows healthy. Okay, now good. So now it can transfer the request to the instances and here it is. That's good. Remember what we used for password, default password one, two, three, and the username is admin. Yeah, this is not secure, I understand, but change, change it when you get time. I'm not going to save this because this is not, not really my purpose. So just, well, this is still shows not secure because the, yeah, the SSL change takes time. I'm, I'm going to open a new browser like here and let's see if there is good or not. Yeah, here it is good. You see, here it says that certification is secure, connection is good, certificate is valid, blah, blah, blah. All those things are good. So we have admin and then uh, default pass. This is the default pass. Paste it, login. Don't save, I don't want to save it. There it is, there is our WordPress. Now let's do um, pod auto scaling. So horizontal pod auto scaling because this is, let's assume that it will be very like uh, there will be a lot of millions of users are coming and you, you you cannot serve all those users with one pod what you have to do is like we can set some pod auto scaling rule and then the cluster will automatically uh, increase based on the number of uh, requests that is coming up for that reason you need to install the metric server so this is the metric server that you are going to install copy this and then uh, paste it here very simple just one line this will install the metric server 
And then here, uh, we have to copy this part. And let's, uh, this kubectl deploy or scale deployment. The deployment name is like, uh, I think this is the deployment name. I think WP and then CPU percentage 50. You can also find the deployment from the uh, cube cutter. Refresh. So cube cutter get deployments. So here you can also see that uh, these are the deployments, right? This is actually, this is the name. So you can direct, it's better you take it from the terminal rather than from this. So this is the command, kubectl auto scale deployment atik WP WordPress and then CPU percentage 50. That means if it's 50%, then it should, uh, if the CPU uses 50, more than 50%, then it should increase the pods. This is the minimum and maximum. Let's say maximum is 100. Minimum is like, we said five. So at least five pods to be running. Let's see what happens. Click here. That's great. And now kubectl get PO. Here it is. Uh, it's still not being. And let's wait. One or two more minutes. Yeah, here it is. You see all those things, ports are running. Minimum five ports we said. So you see one, two, three, four, five. Five ports has been triggered. It takes time because like these ports will spin up. Let's refresh this clip cuttle. Only one is running. Others are still waiting. We have the screen. Also, this depends on the number of uh, resources as well, because like I, what I have is only two, um, what I have is only two pods, two nodes with M5 large. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is fully sufficient or not to serve all those pods or to create all those pods here. Let's see, view again. Yeah, now it's all running, good. So now if we refresh this screen, so we are very in a nice situation. Click here and then update the plugins. All those things are very good. I can add some media. Now I have to see that uh, what will happen. Like e, there are five ports running, right? So I'm uploading that and it's not saving any of the ports, but rather than it's saving to a persistent volume. So here I have added this media. And now if I log out from this and log in to this section, media, Here it shows from the persistent storage, right? So this is this persistent storage path. And then like if I uh, update the deployments and make it one, like mean, mean to one, it will delete a couple of uh, pods. But our file will be not deleted, right? That's the beauty because it is stored in the persistent storage. So let's update. I see to minimum one. That means I don't want to have minimum five pods running. Oh, already exist at scale deployment. Pom, pom, pom. Oh, it's already been created, so I cannot create anymore. But yeah, I think I can I can edit. So cube cattle get um I think it's get HPA maybe. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So uh, horizontal pod autoscaling, which is called HPA. 
cube cuttle get hpa this is the one and then you can uh cube cuttle edit hpa and then atik wp wordpress I edit this, it should be open in a nano. And I should say minimum replicas rather than five, I want to set it to one. Right, save. Okay, it's being edited. So I hope it will uh, reflect the number of pods. So let's see. Yeah, main pod one, replicas five. So probably it will go down and uh, reduce, delete some pods. If we see here, get PO, probably it will start deleting those pods one by one gradually. It will take time. But whatever it is deleted, our media, it's not, will be not deleted because this is persistent. Okay, if you see not secure, this is, Maybe browser is caching, not the issue of the SSL because we can see that SSL is working fine here. Yeah. Okay, that being said, this is the tutorial for setting up uh, WordPress in Kubernetes with high availability and network load balancer. <laughs> that being said, that's it for today. I hope you like this video. If you do, please share, uh, subscribe to my channel, share this with your friends, families, and uh, comment below. What do you want to learn? Thank you, everyone. Allah Peace. Assalamu alaikum. Bye bye.